Hello, it's the Great Canadian Bagel here coming to you with the next update to the French presidential election series and this will be the second last update before the first round. I'm probably going to be I'm going to be doing more after the first round for second round, assuming more polling occurs. I believe there was last year, so expect there to be update there as well. So uh, first things first here. Le Pen has surged this last week. She's gained roughly two percentage points in the overall. It seems at this point that she is consolidating the Zamar and Pécresse voters as both of those seem to be less and less likely to make it to the second round. And it seems at this point that while Zamor is unlikely to win or even make it to the second round, his candidacy could very well have caused Macron to lose or have the potential to lose because he makes, since he is a much harder and more, I don't want to say extreme, I think that is overselling it, but he is a much harder and more distinct stance from Macron. He makes Le Pen look more moderate by res as a result, even though Le Pen historically, and she's moderated a little bit in trying to quote unquote detoxify the uh, Resemblant National brand, but it's not as much. It's still a very different, more populist, more it's kind of hard to describe it. I don't really like using terms such as right, quote-unquote right wing, but it's more quote-unquote right wing than uh, uh, Macron. And Zamora seems to have made her look a lot more reasonable, which as we get into the second round I think is really helping her assuming the polling is correct I will note she her polling numbers did not match her ballot box numbers in 2017 I don't think this is a polling miss per se in 2017 that is I think it's just her voters didn't vote because she has heavily blue collar heavily skewed to the youth and both of these demographics have a much lower marginal propensity to vote. So, historically, she's not done quite as well. And I think in 2017, there was a big rallying effect against her. But I don't think that's going to happen in uh, this election. But I'll get to that when I go to the second round in a second. So what has happened here? So... Uh, Macron has lost a little tiny bit. He didn't go down as much as I expected this week. He did lose some ground in the polls, but it's a bit muddy. Some he went up a little bit, some he went down a good a bit. I would say he has seemed to... If he, can, if he actually is still losing support because foreign policy issues are getting less important... He seems to be balancing that out with gaining, consolidating support. I think some of Picress's voters are, or not I think, objectively from, from polling, some of Picress's voters are shifting to Macron. Or at least some of the 2020, or 2017 Republican voters are going to Macron more than they were before. And he also seems to be capitalizing more on the party socialist voters. Not quite as much. Melancon is really sopping up a lot of the left now and i will note he's pulled 13 percent right now in the model but i think by the next update and the last update for the first round he's going to go up again i could even see him going up two percentage points potentially if his polling holds where it is to a 14 15 range so i am very much expecting him to jump quite a bit so if we go here just look at the general results if we look at the graph here which i haven't really been talking about much because the graph is pretty boring we really see macron's big jump and le pen is big jump and 
to a lesser extent, Melancon has a big jump and everyone else is declining. Though, with the exception of Dupont and all who also seem to be gaining ground, and uh, Roussel, but they're secondary. Like, this last week, Zamora lost a one and a half percentage points, Picress one and a third, Jado and Hidalgo about 0.3, obviously. Tabiro's going down because she's getting pulled zero, but the way the model works, it's not, it's asymptotically approaching zero. Assuming we have enough pulls this week, I think this will be less than 0.1%, but it's still going to technically be on the scoreboard. It is what it is. I do my best. Other seems to have bumped a bit, which is interesting. Uh, I think that's largely Jean LaSalle, who seems to be gaining ground from Pecres voters. Though that's a bit more murky because the polling isn't really breaking out Jean LaSalle very much. So, But it does seem like it's coming from Pecres voters and a little bit too from some more who are uh, switching. And I will also note this. Uh, people might note that this department here, which is, I believe, pronounced Ode, has switched heavily from the Macron column to the Le Pen column, and this is where I embarrassingly admit I had the wrong base data for this writing. I This is uh, the writing of, or, sorry, this is the department of Everon, and I had uh, copied Everon's 2017 poll results to Ode, so literally every single update I've ever published has had this department wrong. Oops. It's a very small change. When I fixed that, it only changed this. Macron lost a uh, 0.05% and Le Pen gained 0.08% to the current numbers, and a couple other ones were changed. So it's very small. <laughs> So it hasn't affected any of the math at all in the grand scheme of things, but I was wrong with this and I have corrected it. I have double checked most of these, the rest of these, so I'm very confident they're correct, but there is 105 departments here. So sometimes mistakes happen, but I have caught this one. And I will note, I find it interesting that no one has commented that I had this department owed that went super hard for Le Pen in uh, 2017 Sferbly Macron's column this entire time quite amusing to me no one else got that so not blaming the audience here it's my bad but it's just interesting maybe people aren't as fami familiar with maps as I am I'm not really sure about there but anyways but the last week uh, Le Pen has solidified the south a bit more and definitely solidifying the north a couple of these departments like all and uh, Pas de calais and Oiseau or woes are uh, above 30 percent for her now uh, a bunch of the other or, and uh muse and hot de mont de marne my pronunciation's not great but i'm trying so she's gaining a bunch of steam and you're really seeing here and where we really see this is the second round numbers, which are shocking. She's pulled just four percentage points behind Macron. Now, this puts it as an almost certain Macron win, if nothing changes from this point forward, because my margin of error is roughly two percentage points for nationally. But that said, it's not a 0% chance she could win at this point in the second round. And if her momentum keeps building into the next week and into the second round debates and all that stuff, I think she has a very solid chance to go through. This is 100%. This is going to be a competitive election. So if I have any French viewers, which I don't know, because YouTube doesn't want to give me demo or details like that for some reason. Apparently, my I guess my French viewer base is very small, <laughs> which is interesting. But anyway, it's probably because I don't speak French. 
Um, if I do have any viewers in French, or, and who can who, in France or can vote in the French election, I do strongly recommend you vote, no matter what side you support. It is a competitive election, and if you are a Le Pen voter, it would be a shame if she loses because people supporting you don't vote. Same thing with Macron. I do my best here to not try to pick or endorse sides. Mostly, that is not to say that I have no preferences, but I do not want to, uh, my goal of this channel is not to endorse or pick candidates that I think are going to win. It is just to report what the uh, situation is. Now, it's easier with things like France versus Canada, where I have less invested opinion in France than I have in Canada. But I do try my best. Either way. So, oops. Uh, I do that. So, Le Pen is doing quite well. She's very solidified the South in the, the very South in the second round. Clamped down on the North here. And is doing quite well going into the center of the country with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... 11 departments in margin of error throughout the center slash east of the country. That's very significant. And theoretically, is she... Like, it's unlikely, but it is not impossible that she could pull a win at this point. If her momentum continues, going to ground two numbers here, if she gains another, what what is this, 1.8 percentage points, yeah, she's going to win. Or, uh, well, there's three weeks before the next election. She goes an average of, like, the last three week, uh, two weeks, she's gained uh, 2.6. So she gains 1.2 percentage points a week. Yeah, she's going to win. But who says, like, it's kind of hard to say if her momentum is going to continue going forward. Because when it comes to the second round, and this is the wrinkle for Le Pen, in the first round she can do quite well because there's Zamor and Picress to kind of shepherd vote voters towards her. Zamor shepherding more moderates towards her because the moderates who don't like Macron are shepherded more towards Le Pen because Zamor seems too extreme to them and Le Pen seems more moderate as a result regardless of whether that is true or not there's some truth to it but it depends on your politics how how much that truth matters like uh, you could argue like Mussolini is more moderate than Hitler but like does the average person care about the difference there I'm not saying either Zamor or Le Pen are like those two people but that is the first example that came to my mind uh, negative ex another example you could say Lenin was more moderate than Stalin does that mean people would actually want to live under one of the looters hard to say again this is not to say Le Pen and Zamor are like Hit Lenin and Stalin it is just an example of a, an absurd example and Picrest does this on the other end because by being what seems to be the opinion forming of her is that she's a bit squishy and people don't really trust her to actually do the things that the populist right in France wants to do it makes she makes Le Pen look good because she's squishy and Le Pen seems to be less squishy than her even though she's arguably more squishy than Zamor but these two combined seem to be really pushing her campaign up if that continues into the second round, it's going to be hard to say because, again, the big problem in the second round is she doesn't have this compar the comparison to Zamor and Picress. It is just going to be Macron and Le Pen. I don't know why I switched screens there. It's going to be it's just going to be these two. So that's going to be harder to wage here. The one final note I'll have, and I will oh too far to the left. Uh, I will note the Smart 27th week is ignore it because I forgot to write the numbers properly, so these are not the correct numbers. But I will note here, uh, there seems to be a 
large decline across the board and interest in the second round. Uh, Le Pen's lost four percentage points. Pecresse, this is mathematically impossible, but in a hypothetical Macron versus Pecresse, she's lost 10 percentage points. Hypothetical uh, Zamora to Pecresse has lost seven percentage points. And Macron versus Melancon, which is uh, more possible than the other two, but still very unlikely right now unless Le Pen explodes in the next week. Only 75% of people in France would actually, or 75% of first round voters would vote again in the second round. So it's really looking like the absentation for the second round is ticking up. Or the expected ab absentation. Which, regardless of the result, if like you start seeing something like 70 25% of voters from the first round either don't vote or vote blank. That could very well like, quite hurt the legitimacy of whichever president does happen. And if that gets even worse, that could really run amok to the result of the election and like the confidence and the, uh, not the, legi the, the legitimacy, that's the wrong word, but like the political power of the person who actually wins. Because if you win a decisive election, like let's say, uh, 2017, Macron won decisively. That gives him a much firmer mandate among the people to do what he wanted to do because he firmly won. Both first and second round. If he does the same thing, but only 50% of people vote in the second round, that's not a very firm mandate. That's not as firm as it was, so that kind of means he has less wiggle room. And that is an important consideration. No, that said, this is not to say you should abstain to hurt the person who might win. You should vote for the candidate you like the best. Again, vote. It's important. So where are we here? Where is France? Well, that question is quite simple. It's in Western Europe. It's by Belgium, Luxembourg, Germany, Italy, Spain. That's where France is. <laughs> Sorry, that's a really bad joke. Um, where does this election look to be going? It looks like it's going to be a close, contested election. I don't think any winner is going to have a easy win. It's unlike the Hungarian election that's going to be taking place as of the day of the release of this video. I don't think it's going to be very clear. Like, there's no clear favorite going into this there's a clear favorite for the first round i think i would be safe to say it's almost unthinkable a week away from the first round that anyone but macron and le pen are going to advance to second round almost unthinkable but three weeks from the third round or sorry the second round it's very difficult to say between le Le Pen and Macron, who's going to win? And again, Le Pen is doing has a lot of energy and momentum behind her, and Macron seems to be stalling. He's doing well in the first round, but he doesn't really he seems to be losing support relatively in the second round. And I will note where go back here, I guess is the bit of best way to show it. The biggest thing that's hitting Macron, so if you look here, uh, right wing wise Zamor who's almost 80% of his first round voters are going to Le Pen the vote absentation rate is not really declining very much Dupont -en where about 70% are going to Le Pen not declining much but then you go to like Jado 60% going to uh, Macron now dropped 12 points and that's mostly coming from voters that were going to vote for Macron same thing with Hidalgo same thing with Melancon. Same thing with Roussel. In fact, actually, Roussel's marginal propensity to vote uh, Le Pen has went up a little bit. So what's happening here, it seems, isn't that Macron is losing supporters. In fact, I would even go hazard to say that the Hidalgo and the Jado and the Melancon, no, maybe not the Melancon, but the Hidalgo and the Jado voters are more likely to 
prefer Mel or Macron to Le Pen, but they seem to be bowing out of the race. And this is also true to a certain extent with the Pacres voters. It's more uh, even with 49 to 30%. But again, a four point drop for Macron, about three point drop for Pacres, or sorry, Le Pen. It's a larger drop for Macron than it is for Le Pen. And on top of that, these four more centrist candidates are where uh, Macron gets most of his net support. And all of them, are Macron, actually including Macron in this update, all four of these people have lost voters. Le Pen has gained voters. Dupont-Anon has gained voters. Zamora has lost voters. Roussel and Melanchon have gained voters. And Melanchon, even two weeks ago, that's still pretty even, 41-27. But now it's 31 to 24 with some rounding. It's a much more even split for Melanchon, and it's still a relatively even split from Roussel, 19 to 38. It's much more even than this, 15 to 46. The point here isn't to dwell on the specific numbers. That's not that relevant. It's what Macron seems to be failing at right now isn't necessarily his campaign to make people think he's better. It seems to be failing at the campaign, or better than Le Pen, that is. It seems to be the campaign to motivate people to vote. And I think if the momentum here continues, this is speculation I try to avoid, but if the momentum continues here, I would not be surprised to see Le Pen walk away with a victory on the 24th. It's three weeks away. A lot can happen. And when it comes down to when it's just Macron versus Le Pen, and you don't have these what-ifs, and what if Melanchon gets it, or maybe Zamor comes in somehow, maybe Pekras comes in, if you get rid of all these what-ifs, and it's just Le Pen versus Macron, Maybe you'll see the rallying to Macron that you saw in 2017, that you saw at uh, Chirac in 2000. Was it 1999? 1998? Regardless, doesn't matter. Um, maybe you'll see this rallying. I don't think so this time. I think the situation in France has changed categorically from 2017. I don't think you'll see the left rally to Macron the same way it did. And the moderate right sure has a, sure is, isn't. I'm not sure if there's much moderate left right left in France. That is, Macron has gobbled up a bunch of it, and a lot of it seems to have a lot of the original moderate right electorate seems to have lost faith in moderate right politicians which isn't a unique french phenomenon i've said this in the past this is something that is happening globally in western countries moderate right-wing parties are losing their legitimacy among voters and they're going for more populist more quote-unquote true conservative parties and again, when I say quote-unquote true conservative, I don't necessarily mean economically. Like, the Republican platform, as from what I've seen, is perfectly economically conservative. They actually do it. And that's part of the reason why these parties are losing legitimacy. There's questions that they actually would follow through with their platforms and not just continue with uh, status quo policies. But the conservative movement globally seems to be moving more to social issues. And that's... And France is the prime example of this. They started... For, it happened first in France. But this century, it seems, the conservative movement is switching to, conserv to uh, social issues. And it seems like it's gaining speed and momentum. I don't think it should be a surprise... 
And in the case of France, they've had what? Uh, one, two, three, four. This is the fifth presidential election this decade. This decade? This century? Oh, I guess I put the, Jean, the uh, Chirac one at 2002. Anyways, uh, that puts it at the fifth century, and of them, look, uh, Resemble National or the Front National preceding it have seemed to be second place three times and a strong performance in 2012 under Le Pen though she didn't qualify second round this shouldn't surprise people it's not that Necess it, uh, you should not consider this that the French electorate is getting more extremist. It's that the conservative population in the West is getting more focused on social issues, not economic. And this trend is going to continue and continue. Now, some of these social issues have roots in eco economics, but the economic solution isn't the primary point. For example, I'm going to digress to Canada. You look at the conservative leadership race, the two main people seem to be uh, Jean Charest and Pierre Polyev. What's the difference between these two people? On paper, they're both economically conservative. But in rhetoric, and in priority, Poiliev is focused much more on social concern, housing, immigrants not being able to get their jobs certified, inflation. These have roots in economics. They're not divorced from it because nothing is divorced from economics. But the primary concern about housing prices isn't it's inefficient for the economy. It's that people socially cannot get houses same thing with inflation the problem with inflation isn't necessarily that it's bad for the economy that's not the pitch that's not the argument that's not the, the talking point is that inflation hurts people socially and that's where the conservative movement globally seems to be going and i think we're going to see a lot more elections like this in Europe, in North America, in Australia even, New Zealand, other countries that have properly functioning pluralistic democracies. And another digression, again, not France, but still very relevant to this, you have the Hungarian election tomorrow. Who's likely going to win? Almost certainly at this point, if the polling is not a lie, Viktor Orban. What is Viktor Orban? Who is he? What is his policies? He's a conservative who does economic conservative things, but his rhetoric and his primary goals are social. He achieves those social goals with economic conservatism, primarily. Some things you can't that he's done cannot strictly argue that are economic conservative, like uh, giving families money, like free loans, interest free loans. That's not economically conservative, but it is socially conservative policy because you're trying to encourage families, stuff like that. But that's uh, I'm not going to get too much in the weeds of Hungary because I didn't cover that election. But as another example. That's quite present because the elections, to, well, today, as this video is being posted, but tomorrow, or, or actually today as it's being recorded <laughs> as well. Um, to summarize, the French election is so interesting to me, and I think to anyone who's interested in trends in politics and polling, because it is the most obvious 
and most clearly seen example of how the conservatives across the West are shifting. France is just the easiest to see it. But this trend is everywhere, and you can find it easily if you look for it. But with that, I'm going to end the video for the day. And if you liked it, uh, please, by all means, like, share, subscribe. Comment below if you, in fact, did see that I had screwed up the Department of Ode and you just didn't say anything because you trusted my model that much. Brownie points, but uh, don't lie if you don't have to. Uh, other comments, if you think Le Pen can actually pull out the win, will Macron rally? Will she get smashed like she did in 2017? Will, will Melancon be able to get there? I'd like to see all these things. And let me know anything else about the election or even anything else I've touched on in the video. I love reading comments. And whenever there's something I, ha I can say that I have anything relevant to say about the comment, I do reply to as many as I can. I do read them all at this point because my channel's small enough. And uh, sometimes I won't reply to your comment because, like, there was a comment on the last French video where a fellow that I can't think of the name of said some nice positive things, but I didn't really have anything to say in reply. So I read your comment, guy. I can't think of your name because I don't have it pulled up here. But uh, nothing, to, nothing to comment on it. But I do appreciate the comment, and please, by all means, uh, ex I like more. More comments are good. The next video for France, uh, just as a final update, I'm likely going to release it before next Sunday. Not 100% firm yet. I want to wait till I capture as much polling as possible before I release it. But I don't plan on releasing it on Sunday because I want to release it before the day of the election. And in fact, I think France might have laws about publishing stuff, so I might have to publish it even earlier, depending on... I'm going to double check that. I don't want to get... To, I don't think I would because I don't live in France, but I would not want to get in trouble with the uh, French authorities for publishing things because I believe they have a polling ban for some number of days before an election, and I don't think this should count as polling because it's aggregation. But I don't want to get in trouble, so stay tuned. We sometime next week. Otherwise, I hope you all have a lovely day, and I will see you next time.